uh, welcome to the first standard format uh, introduction vlog for Camper Build 9.0. Um, I did, uh, about a week or a couple days ago, I did do a live where I talked briefly about the introduction. Um, I think I will probably try to do lives, you know, maybe once or twice a week. Um, mostly those will just be kind of imagery of me working in the shop. Uh, but I'm still going to, at least weekly, maybe twice a week, uh, do a standard vlog. Um, if you guys have been with my channel for a while, you guys have seen me do those for other builds. Uh, they just kind of go over uh, the progress of my build um, at my various stages. So, as you guys can see right here and based on the title, the tub of the camper is completed. Um, I'm giving this formal introduction because my channel has, thankfully to all of you guys, have had pretty notable amount of growth recently. So I'm assuming there's maybe some people out there who either stumble across this video organically or maybe have subscribed after watching one or two videos but don't really understand um, uh, where my channel is going. So, But to everybody, for a variety of reasons, I want to thank my audience. Uh, thank you guys so much. And uh, it seems as though I'm an in inspiration for at least a large number of you, and I'm glad that I can be. So anyways, but uh, a tub, many of you guys will be well aware of what that is, but this is the portion of the camper that actually slides into the truck bed. Um, as you guys can imagine, if you think about a foundation in a house, the tub is kind of an equivalent structure. So um, this one is, at this point in time, which actually kind of surprised me, the lightest weight tub that I have made to date. Um, for a dimensional perspective, this is very close to size for my last two truck campers, Camper 7.0 and for Camper 8.0, which is my latest camper. Uh, and that being that this will actually slide into the bed of my pickup truck, which is six foot five inches long or 77 inches, um, and allow you to shut the tailgate. So just like 7.0 and 8.0, this one will be the same. Now the, the, the lower floor width of this is 49 inches, meaning that this will only slide into a full-size pickup truck. And then um, you guys will probably, if you don't can't tell it from this imagery, you guys will probably see it in some others I take but the front 17 inches of this actually bumps out a little bit uh, closer to where the back of the pickup truck is in, uh, I guess it'd be to the rear of the wheel wells. And that just adds a little bit of storage and a little bit more stability to the tub. Now, um, as opposed to my last camper, that uh, 8.0, which had a total width of 71 inches, this camper is going to have a total width of 75 and a quarter inches. So it's going to be a little bit longer. Um, so, but let's get back to the weight. So just for context to size, so camper 7.0, when I finished the tub, I weighed it and it was 134 pounds. For camper um, 8.0, my last camper, I weighed the tub and it weighed 90 pounds. This tub for this camper came in at 68 pounds, which is incredible. This is the lightest camper tub I've made to weight. I knew um, every iteration of a camper I make, as I'm sure you guys will see, the external shape is different. And I've, you know, I use kind of a variety of materials depending on what I'm doing. But I'm also always tweaking and modifying the build techniques because every single camper I build, I learn more and more. I kind of, and, and this was no different. Um, a, a lot of what I did here was, was very reminiscent of Camper 8.0, but this will be uh, the building, the primary building material of this one will be smooth sided. So um, in Camper 8.0, I used the wooden planks for uh, the wing overhang sections and for the sidewalls. On this one, I used a quarter inch ply. However, as you guys can see, I used a laminate or laminated um, uh, cedar board construction technique to establish the frame. And like I said, this thing is 68 pounds, nearly half the weight of that of what 7.0 was, even though it's a very similar dimensionally. And, uh, and still, I guess, what would that be? Uh, 20 some pounds lighter than 8.0. So this is really trending in a very good direction for how light this camper will be.
So, um, for those who might not have seen the live, let me talk briefly. Uh, you guys will have to wait and kind of see how the progress of this goes, but let me give you a couple of insights of what uh, some of my main goals of 9.0 will be. So 9.0 will be a smooth-sided camper. It's going to it, very reminiscent of that of 5.0 or 7.0, if you guys are familiar with those campers. Um, like I said, it will fit in the confines of the bed, pickup truck bed, so you can shut the tailgate. I really, really like that style. I don't think I'll actually diverge away from that. That's just my personal opinion. Um, the curved or arced roof structure of 8.0, if I presume many of you are familiar, and if you're not, I'll, I'll put the tour video link in this description. Um, that is aesthetically, and I think it has some practical functionality also, probably one of my favorite build shapes. So 9.0 is also going to incorporate a very similar arced roof construction as to that of 8.0. Now obviously the exterior material is going to look different, which is going to give a pretty dramatically different look to the overall camper. But additionally, from a design perspective, uh, just like 7.0 had a 45 degree angle that met the roof from the vertical sidewalls, Camper 9.0 is going to have that same thing, but that 45 degree angle uh, leading into the roof is going to have to mesh in with the arced nature of the roof. That is going to be very, very challenging. And, I, and I'll be dead honest with you guys, I've visualized it in my mind extensively. I even built a little mock-up, but I am not 100% sure I will be able to successfully build that shape. It's going to be by far one of the most complex shapes I've ever done in a camper. Uh, I'm about 90-95% sure I can, uh, but I do have a plan B. If I get to that point and I realize that I just can't make it look right, uh, I do have a plan B, which I think will also be a pretty uh, unique shape. But um, this camper right here is also going to still be a pretty small camper, just like 8.0. Um, as I refine my techniques, I kind of find what I personally prefer. I know it's not everybody's preference, but I like the smaller campers. I think I can make them pretty darn comfortable where they're at, but what I love about them and what I particularly love about 8.0 besides its aesthetics is on the truck, you almost don't even notice it. It's almost indistinguishable that you have a camper on there, which is perfectly the goal I'm going for. Now, one thing that's gonna differentiate on 9.0 on 9 over 8.0 is some of the dimensions. I'm still gonna keep it a small camper, but like I said, 8.0's uh, overall width was 71 inches. This one is gonna be 75. So it's gonna be bumped out about four inches, just a little wider. Um, I was a little bit hesitant to do that because I really, really like the width of um, uh, 8.0. But uh, I'm going to give it just a little bit wider, give it a little bit more internal space. And then uh, the cab over section will be very similar. It'll be a small stubby one, but it'll probably be about two inches longer on 9.0. And then the total interior roof height for 9.0 will probably be somewhere in the range of two to four inches taller uh, than 8.0. So it will have a very similar shape to 8.0. Uh, but it would be dimensionally a little bit larger, different exterior material style, and um, and then there will be some other things that you guys are just going to have to wait and see that I'm pretty excited about from a design perspective. So let's get a little closer look at this, and I'll show you how I built this, and then we'll tip it up on its side, and we'll look at the underneath section. All right. So the frame material of this is cedar, and I acquire this cedar just by buying fence pickets at my local home store. Uh, I plane them down with a thickness planer down to half of an inch. These are ripped to a width of one and a half inches. And then I, I use the word laminate, but that just basically means I'm gluing them together, okay? And what that allows me to do is pretty easily make spaces for actual joinery. So this camper in a lot of ways is, is being built, you know, more akin to a piece of furniture than it would be like uh, a residential construction, for example. So this is a mortise and tenon like joint. Okay. Um, so this is one of the wing support platforms that go across. Let me widen this out just so you guys can see the larger context. And I'm going to zoom back in. 
Now you'll notice that this little stub sticks out here uh, and the internal space in here. Uh, there will be some support structures that go across for a bed area, but I did not want to define that just yet. So I left these little stubs out here and later I can just, when I laminate other pieces together, I could just insert it, glue it together, and it'll allow me to kind of bind all of these little stub sections out for what will be the internal space. I did the same thing here. So this will be the door opening. I roughed it in now, but I will define the overall height later. And then that means I will just laminate pieces, slide over this, glue it, and clamp it together and pull tight. Now, this, uh, when you guys, when I flip this up, you'll see that this column structure drives right into the frame structure, which is covered up with this plywood here in the bottom of the floor of this tub. So this whole thing from a joinery perspective on the east west or side to side plane is tied together through this mortar mortise and tenon like joints now front to back uh i just have various pieces inserted and they're glued and screwed um so there's not any joinery traditional joinery holding it from the front uh, from the front to back angle uh, i'm not worried about it from a strength perspective now but the joinery provides two roles one, I do think there is some additional strength, but perhaps more so, though, it makes the assembly easier and more precise. I know I can imagine many of you are looking at this and, and say, is that seems like an incredible amount of work to do what you're doing. Why didn't you just, you know, uh, nail them together? And, and you could have. Um, and it is a lot of work to laminate all these boards for this frame structure. But just in my personal experience as a person who's building these, it works out well. And what this has produced is dimensionally, this is a big thing. I mean, this is almost, this is 77 inches long and 75 inches wide. This produced a perfectly square structure, which is critical for the foundation of what will be this camper, of course. So th this, this, I'm not trying to convince anyone. I don't care if you do it or not, but for me, that's my rationale of, of laminating these pieces together. It makes it incredibly strong. It allows me to correct any kind of inaccuracies in the, in the, in the uh, actual columns and beams to make them nice and straight. And, uh, and then it makes assembly super easy. Now, uh, the skinning material is a quarter inch ply. Uh, later in the video, you guys will see how I'm going to coat that to make it waterproof and so forth. But, um, and then there will be, at a later time, there will actually be insulating panels which are uh, affixed to all of the internal surfaces of this uh, within the difference or the spaces between those columns and beams. So let's tip this bad boy up and we'll look at what the bottom looks like. So this is what the floor looks like down here. In these spaces, I'll take inch and a half XPS foam board insulation, and they will be glued in, use, glued in using this great stuff construction adhesive. I really, really like this product, and it works very well for the foam board. Prior to me doing that, though, is I will coat all of the exterior surfaces. I'll do some uh, uh, some finish sanding and coat it with the Dura back to provide a. a a uh, protective coating on the outside of this and then once I got this in the bottom then I'll glue in and insert those panels you guys can get another look of what this frame structure looks like all laminated cedar um, a lot of people go by two by twos again which is totally fine um, I just prefer this uh, the cedar's lighter and I think when it's laminated together it's stronger but it's also easier for me to make sure that I have nice straight pieces. My experience with a lot of the two by two is, is it's very, I mean, you could select them, hand select them, but it's very hard to find very straight pieces. So um, when you're laminating the cedar, if you ever have a board that kind of angles off a little bit, you can always correct it and clamp it down in the glue process and you can 
if you take your time with it, you can really make those boards nice and straight. And then the cedar is very stable. Um, it's also, of course, this will have a protective coating on it, but it is also very resistant to rot. Um, so it's really, in my view, a very perfect material for something like this. Uh, and it is, it is very lightweight. Now, many of you guys who watch my builds, you know that my framing structure will primarily be of cedar. However, I do incorporate um, hardwood occasionally in areas where I think I need it. Um, again, most of you are probably well aware, but different kinds of wood have very different qualities. And broadly speaking, all woods are kind of divided up in between hardwoods and softwoods. But within the confines of those major categories, there, there's a spectrum of hardness. Um, so this right here is a strip of poplar, which is technically considered a hardwood, but it is a little bit on the softer side of hardwoods. Um, but it's still sufficiently strong. I ran this small one by one down uh, this edge just to make this uh, vertical wall rigid, but it also provided a nice mounting point for this piece of quarter inch ply that came over from the wing. And what I did, Get a little better view here. Let's move this around. Is that piece of poplar was attached first and it actually sit, uh, sat a quarter inch lower than this. So when I slid this piece up underneath, it wedged between the top of that piece of poplar and the bottom here of this, uh, I guess you'd call it like a wing beam section, um, which made the installation very easy. And then I just used traditional wood glue. Of course, you guys can see a little bit of the squares that squirt out here. And I used um, 18 gauge quarter inch uh, staples to attach it. That's an example right there of the indentations of that. And then I used one inch screws just to provide uh, uh, screwing from the bottom of this quarter inch ply into these frame structures to hold it all together just to give a little bit extra. The screws are probably unnecessary, but I just went ahead and added them to make sure I pulled everything nice and tight. So at this stage of the build, uh, I will go on the exterior surfaces of the tub. I will give it a nice sanding. I'll fill in the various screw holes and indentations left by the uh, quarter inch staples and then I will put the Durabat coating on that. Um, and uh, I mean, in a nutshell, uh, that's where I'm at. But this building technique is very strong. And, uh, and like I said, 68 pounds, that's a pretty darn light um, tub structure. So uh, thanks guys for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Like I said, the... Uh, the lives that I will do during the week is I'll just turn on the camera in the shop while I'm doing some work. Uh, if you guys have comments or questions, you can post them. I'll try to occasionally look at that and answer those. Um, I know that's not for everybody, and I certainly, you know, I, I mean, I probably wouldn't sit down and watch myself do it either. Uh, but some people like, you know, just that, you know, somebody working in the garage and just watching it. So it's just going to be a very natural I, I won't narrate much. Maybe I'll pop in and kind of show somebody what I'm doing. But uh, so just kind of look for those videos if that's something you'd like watching. If not, no big deal. So anyways, guys, thank you guys so much. And uh, I think it's going to be a pretty exciting build. So we'll see you guys in the next video. One other thing I forgot to mention down here. Um, once I get that foam board in after the exterior protective coating is on, I'll actually cut probably about two two and a half inch wide pieces of cedar and stagger them in the non-supported sections side to side i'll just attach them here and run them across that will hold that will provide a little extra strength of supporting the floor but most importantly is it will keep this bottom off of the truck bed a little bit or allow some air circulation and if any water intrusion comes in in the truck bed with the camper in there it will um help dissipate that also uh that will help slide or maneuver the camper around during installation too so that's an important part uh, i'm not to the point of installing those yet but you guys will see those later